This is Jonathan Aguil here for Pro Boxing Fans. We're up here in Sheffield today, head of Kell Brooks, fighting against Mark DeLuke on Saturday night. With me, Jordan Gill. Jordan, how are you doing, first of all? Good, mate, thanks. How are you? Very well, thanks. Um, yeah, yeah, as I mentioned, Kell Brook, Saturday night against Mark DeLuca. Bit of sort of a Sheffield legend, I guess. What are you sort of expecting from him, from him on Saturday night? I'm expecting a big statement, to be honest, because obviously he, he sat about in 2019, been twiddling his thumbs, uh, been itching to fight, and obviously not got a chance to fight. So um, I think now, looking at Kel at this stage of his career, he probably knows that he's got maybe two, three fights left, big fights left. And um, he knows a win on Saturday night could land him a world title fight. So, in true Kel style fashion, I uh, expect him to, to win in flying colours. And Kid Galahad as well in a very sort of tough fight. It's been billed as against Marrero. How do you see that fight playing out? I think it's interesting. I do think it's interesting. I, I don't think it will be as tough as people think. Um, I think Kid Galad will um, shut Marrero down quite well because Marrero looks quite slick and, he, and he's, he's, he's a good boxer if you let him. But people don't realise how strong Kid Galad is and he's a, he's a very good strong fighter um, and he nullifies really well, obviously as you've seen in, in the Josh Ryan fight. So I expect uh, Galahad to get on top um, early, like start on the front foot, on the front foot uh, from the early rounds and I expect him to get uh, stoppage in the middle rounds. Um, I, I've seen Marrero uh, once or twice and, and the times that I've seen him, I think once against Diaz, uh, you know, he's winning the fight, nice and slick, he's doing well, got hit, hit the floor and you know, he could have got up but he didn't um, and, and maybe we'll see the same on Saturday night. And Terry Harper in a world title fight, WBC world title fight. Um, against a very experienced Eva Wallstrom. Talk me through that one. I think it's a great fight. Um, I really, really like Terry Harper. I really rate her. Um, so obviously, women's boxing is growing massively and out of the bunch, I'd pick her to be the next upcoming, the, the, the big deal. So um, I'm really excited to see to see her fight and uh, I think she deserves all, all the success she gets because she's such a nice girl. She works so hard and she's really humble and she comes from a humble place in Doncaster and um, it's, it's, it's a great success story. I'm really happy for her. Moving on to you, uh, in Cold World Gym, in different year last year would you describe it as? Yeah, very, it was very up and down. Um, obviously started the year really well. Um, had a big fight in Peterborough, uh, won a WBA international against Tough Mexican um, in uh, in Peterborough Arena uh, in March, and uh, you know it was a really good fight. Um, got a really good exposure, and then obviously lost uh, to Tonoko, um, and then and then I got a comeback fight in September, and then I uh, I was diagnosed with a thyroid issue, so um, I was I was in that comeback fight in Italy. Uh, one that um, looked really good and was was meant to be going straight into a big fight in December, and obviously I was diagnosed with a, a thyroid disease, so. Um, you know, it sent me right back and I've had to start again. I mean, just touching on that, I suppose it's quite rare for sort of a boxer to have that. Has that sort of made you appreciate it's even life? Because as a boxer, you're very sort of focused, focused one, um, focused mindset on what, you know, the task you've got in hand. But when something like that happens, it must make you think sort of more, less about sort of the boxing. Yeah, definitely. I think your health is the most important thing to you in, in your whole life. And, uh, you know, when something's threatened in your health and you realise how important your life is. Um, and for me, I've made boxing my whole life. I've dedicated my whole life to the sport. So, you know, after that um, that defeat and then I've come back fight, I was looking forward to back-to-back -back fights, big fights and, and climbing the ladder again. And it stopped me from doing that. It stopped me from doing my job which I love, which was frustrating for me. Um, so obviously it's, it, it took boxing away from me and I really I really thought it made me think how much I need boxing in my life and how much I enjoy it and, and it's made me even more hungry for a big year this year. I mean, this year, what sort of level are you looking at? Um, are you looking towards sort of the world scene? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think um, I, I want to prove prove that I'm above domestic. I think I think people know that deep down now. Um, so, you know, get a fight, maybe an eight round to come back in March, um, looking at end of March, and then straight into a big fight, hopefully European, um, fringe world level. Um, all these fighters I want to fight fringe world level, get myself up the rankings and work my way up into a shot in the next year and a half, two years. One eye on Kid Galahad this weekend? Oh, why not? Um, if, yeah, there's one eye on everybody in that division because you'd be stupid not to. I do want to get your opinion. Shaka Stevenson's fight announced this week in New York City. Uh, we did think maybe it'd be in a unification for, with Josh Warrington. What do you make of the whole situation? Oh, I think it's a shame that they couldn't get the Warrington fight over the line. 
Uh, I think it would have been a great fight. Um, but you know, I understand what they're doing with Shakur because he's so young and he's such he's got so much potential as as a great champion um, and like a. a Hall of Famer, really. If, if you look at some of the that's world champion at such a young age and has the ability and, and the size to go through the weights, I think they'd probably be stupid to risk a Josh to a fight because everyone underrates him and he always gets the win. So, um, you know, he's fighting Claudio, uh, not Claudio Romero, Galad's fighting Claudio Romero, he's fighting um, Ma Mariaga. Um, and that's a great fight because obviously Mariaga, was it nine or ten rounds he went with uh, Lomachenko before he was pulled out? Um, so he's, he's been in a couple of world title fights and he's a season, season pro. So it'd be a good, good uh, style for Shakur's teams to showcase his skills against and uh, expect him to come through that with final colours. And, and to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if he moves through the weights uh, even after this defence. Do you want to just move on to the big rematch coming up in Las Vegas, Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder? Have you had a chance to sort of think about it? How do you see that rematch going? Yeah, I think it's a great fight. Uh, the first fight was a great fight. There was drama from start to finish. Obviously, Fury was on the floor and got up uh, twice and, um, you know, was out boxing Wilder for the majority of the fight. And I think, in my opinion, uh, Fury won that fight and it shouldn't have been, been a draw. But, you know, it was a draw and we're here again and they're fighting. Um, I think it might be a little bit different in the next fight. Um, I expect Fury to have all the skills to outbox him again. I feel like in the first fight, Fury was into his head and um, I mean, um, he was in his head and he, he took uh, Wilder's confidence away from him, uh, made him miss and, and Wilder was guessing him, second guessing himself. So I think Wilder knows now when he lands on Fury that he hurts him and I expect him to come out with a little bit more urgency and expect him when he does hurt him to put his foot on the pedal a little bit more and um, and, and throw with a little bit more intent to finish him because um, he knows he can hurt him. So I'm expecting a good fight. I think heavyweight boxing could go either way. I'd love uh, Tyson Fury to win and bring back the heavyweight championship, the WC heavyweight championship back to England because uh, we've always got to back the Brits. I've just got a sneaky feeling that Wilder knocks him out this time. Um, I just want to talk about sort of the Coldwell gym at the moment. You've got you, yourself, Hopi Price, obviously was meant to be on the bill but pulled out with a slight injury. Um, Anthony Fowler's obviously left now. What's sort of the atmosphere now that Anthony's sort of left? But I know he obviously went on good terms. But is it kind of a different sort of atmosphere now he's gone? It's a little bit quieter. Because we've not lost one scar, so we've lost two scars because obviously we had Bellew and, and Fowler. So... Um, we're, we're two scousers down, so it's going to be a bit quieter in it. But, um, you know, it's a shame that he left. Um, I obviously wish him all the, all the best and I'm still keeping contact. So, um, no, yeah, it's a bit, a bit different, but obviously um, it's not a team sport, is it? You, you go in and you, you focus on yourself. So um, things like that won't really make a difference to, 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 to me. Um, obviously, it's good to have other training partners and, and a yeah, good atmosphere and good banter in the gym. But um, whether you've got it or you're not, then you've got a job to do when you get in that gym and uh, Dave has always given us all, all the time in the world um, to train um, so you know nothing's really changed for me going to put you on the spot a bit in the moment who is your top three pound for pound in the world in the world uh, Lomachenko uh, I think for sure sheer tenacity and, and there's no arguing really because he's the only world champion with a 100% knockout ratio is um, Arthur Baturbia. Um and do you know what I've got to say Usyk so we've got we've got two um, two Ukrainians in there so uh, yeah I see I see them guys as the top three but obviously there's so many others like you got Errol Spence you got so many good fighters in the world um, it's hard to narrow it down to just three and if I had a bit more time to think about it there might be a different three completely um, apart from Lomachenko because I think he's absolutely mustard and finally what sort of is your motivation apart from obviously winning titles and stuff um, you obviously had this thyroid um, problem but is there anything else apart from health or what, what is it that motivates you? What motivates me is is the fact that I've dedicated my whole life to this sport. This is the sport I love. This is a job that I've chosen. I could have been anything I wanted to. I did well at school. I could have gone to university. And, uh, but I've chosen this life. And uh, I've dedicated myself to it. And I want to achieve as much as I can achieve. I've, I'm settled. I'm very content in my life. 
uh, with every aspect of my life, uh, my marriage, my family, my health now, um, and boxing is the only bit missing, what I've not achieved that I want, what I want to achieve, so um, I'll be happy when I, when I achieve what I want to achieve, and I, I didn't get in boxing just to become Commonwealth champion, or just to become WBA international champion, or just to break into the top 20 in the world, I come to be number one, and uh, hopefully you'll see that before I retire. Great stuff, Jordan. Thanks very much for talking to pro boxing fans. Look forward to some fight news soon, and we'll catch up with you then. Thank you, mate.